Well, good evening and welcome to Tucker Carlson tonight. Today, President Trump's travel ban won a victory at the Supreme Court, a victory he predicted mm, four or five months ago. This morning, the court reversed the Ninth and Fourth Circuit Court of Appeals and reinstated several key parts of the ban. You'll remember it blocks arrivals from countries the Obama administration declared to be chaotic and terror prone. The court kept in place certain exceptions to the ban, but the majority of people from six countries are now barred from entering the U.S. Joining us now is a supporter of the original ban on the ban, David Tafur. He was a foreign policy advisor to Barack Obama's campaign. This is something the president predicted. He was right. There was never a legal basis for this, correct? President Trump won the legal argument today, and the Supreme Court came out on his side and lifted the stay that the appeals courts put in place. But the legal argument was never the strongest argument against the ban. It's the policy argument. This is <laughs> wait, 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 really wait, bad before you, before you allied over that, will you concede that there was a legal argument against it, that the left as a group made, and it was that a single judge in Hawaii had more power over America's foreign policy and the control of America's borders than the president did. And the Supreme Court today said that's absurd. It wasn't just Hawaii, Tucker. There were a number of court cases, a number of courts that stayed this uh, travel order. And it was a close call, legally. It was a close call for the appeals courts that upheld the stay. It was also a close call for the Supreme Court. But the president's got a right to make judgments like this and enforce them with law. I mean, that's why we have a president. I mean, I, you will concede that. I think that's a valid argument, and that's the argument that was made, and that's one of the arguments that persuaded the Supreme Court today. Although, keep in mind that the court only uh, lifted the stay. It will hear the merits of the case in October. But yes, you're right. But as I said, the stronger argument against this travel ban is it's really bad policy. It doesn't accomplish the goal, which is to make America safer. It doesn't. So I guess you would argue the counter case that the more immigrants we have from, say, Somalia coming into the country, the safer we are? I mean, no, that's what, not what is what I would argue. that you're making? What I would argue is that on policy grounds, this ban is both too broad and not broad enough. Let me explain. Here's why it's too broad. It, it denies Muslims from six predominantly Muslim countries. However, let me, let, me, let, me just stop, let me stop and correct you. It makes no reference to religion at all. It doesn't ban Muslims. It bans people who live in six countries the Obama administration designated as chaotic and terror prone. But the six countries that it banned, the only thing that they have in common is their majority Muslim countries. No, and, the thing they have in common is the Obama the things, administration said one of the they were dangerous. Why, one of the reasons, it's, it's actually not broad enough because it doesn't ban terrorists from the countries where terrorists have actually come from who have killed Americans. Here's one thing that's So are you really arguing, shocked. hold let on, actually, I feel, let me just stop and agree with you. I think you're, that's a fair point. I mean, 15 of the 19 hijackers on 9-11 came from Saudi Arabia. So you're arguing that we should extend the ban and add more countries to it? Is that what you're arguing? What I'm arguing is it's really bad policy because it doesn't protect America. There's a Cato Institute study, and Cato is not a liberal institution. It's a neutral institution. Uh, every every nice one throws but a Cato me, study. But let me okay. tell you, it's, it's, it's incredible what it found. It found between 1975 and 2015, not one American was killed by anyone from the six countries that were banned. But, however... More than 2,000 Americans were killed by terrorists from countries that were not banned, so are like you, Saudi okay, Arabia. Okay, I, I, okay? I, I get that so you don't. What are you arguing for? Are you saying that we should add Saudi Arabia and Jordan and Qatar to the ban? What I'm saying is, if the purpose of this travel ban was to protect America, it's not working. So, and but it's what, not then going what, what, to work. So, so why don't you tell me this? Let me tell you what would work. What, tell me Can why. Can I tell you Wait, what would tell work? Tell me why. We'll just pick Somalia uh, of the six. Now, the, sure. the central government of Somalia does not control the land within its borders. I mean, there's a, a new country that's popped up, Somaliland, in the middle of it. Somali passports are notoriously counterfeited. The government is flaky. There's been a continuous state of war for more than 20 years. How could the U.S. government feel confident that anybody coming from Somalia is being properly vetted? Somalia is a good example. Somalia is a somewhat lawless place. It's right. a failed state. It's a place where we should be very, very wary about letting Somalians into America, and we should have extreme vetting for them. But what we should not do is ban 
all Somalians. As you may know, the U.S. has people inside Somalia. We have diplomats and soldiers inside Somalia fighting terrorists. They're working with Somalians. If they encounter Somalians who are good people, who are helping them, who are brave and putting their life on the line, and they can't have the option to put them through a refugee program so they can come back to America, what, what, when, what, they've, when they've helped America fight terrorists, it doesn't make sense. You're, making, you're, you're just making this up on the spot. No, I'm so, not so, making okay, that up on then, the spot. Then, then back I, it up. I was in Iraq no, during, no, the, no, during the war. I, I don't, I don't and believe we you, you worked with Somalis in Somalia. Let me ask you this. Tens of thousands of Somalis from Somalia have been resettled into the United States, and a, quite a number of them have been involved in terror plots and been arrested for it but in how the many, Minneapolis area. So how, what percentage of those Somalis relocated here once worked for the U.S. government fighting terrorism? I don't know the answer to that. Oh, but my none. point is, oh, but my point is okay. we are, so we are point banning, is but my point, point is we are banning some of them, okay. we are. and, How many and we're not say? banning people from, from countries that have actually produced terrorists who've killed Americans, which okay. makes no sense. But, and by the way, we're also banning people from countries like Syria, where also we have American soldiers uh -huh. who are serving in harm's way. They have Syrians that are helping them, and they might want to put those Syrians through a refugee program because they risk their lives to help America. Well, they, it's too broad. But, we're banning but, but, grandmas sort of stuff, and so grandpas you're, you're trying and to three year old Really? Kids. You're trying to outshout me here, but you raised the specter of the U.S. government keeping the Montagnards out or whatever, whatever group has fought with American soldiers abroad. But you can't name a single person from Somalia who has done that. There likely aren't very many. And that's really not the point at all. You're not for banning anybody. And you somehow think that an open borders policy will make the country safer. And I think most people just would disagree with that because it's demonstrably false. Of course, I can name Somalians who have done that. I know Somalians who have helped Americans and then were granted refugee status. And they're good, law-abiding citizens here in America right now. Just like I know Iraqis, when Somalis I served in Iraq during the heart of the war, the height of the war, and there were Iraqis who risked their lives to help me and to help others who were serving the U.S. government. Well, and we got them in the refugee program. So is, is and Iraq, good, is Iraq, is Iraq on this list? It's one no, of the six countries. Iraq Okay. Was on the so first again, order, and again, that, again, was what on the we first have, order, and that's one of the reasons why the second order is better than the first. Here's what we Iraq have: is a series out. of non sequiturs. Let's get to the bottom line here, which is the president puts this policy into place, which I don't think goes far enough, and you seem to agree with me. But he does it both it, doesn't go far but he enough, does and it goes you, too you far. Said so, but he does it. Why? He does it because Japan. And China have, let's see, almost no terror attacks in Tokyo and Beijing because they don't have any people from these countries living there. London and Paris have a ton because they have the largest concentration of people from these places in the West. Normal people see a connection between those two facts. You don't. But, Tucker, it wasn't tailored to protect us. Let me give you an example. No, no, let's but, say, but don't, me, don't, don't gloss let me it give over. You an Are people from these countries more likely or less likely than people from, I don't know, China? To set off suicide. Let bombs. me give you an analogy. Let's be real. Let's say you're a farmer. Let's say you have sheep. Sometimes your sheep get killed. Let's say thousands of your sheep have been killed by wolves. And let's say you decide you want to protect your sheep better. You build a fence to keep bears out, even though no bear has ever killed one of your sheep, and you let wolves in still. That's, that's an analogy. So are you to what looking President at the, Trump is we're, we're, we're he's not, of, we're he's not time. created I just a want, fence I to protect want us. you to look me straight in the face and say, people from these six countries are as likely to commit acts of terror as people from Japan. Is that what you're saying? No, that is absolutely oh, what I'm, okay. not what I'm saying. But there are other countries where people come from those countries, and they're more likely to commit terrorist attacks. Let's add them to the list. And you and I are in agreement countries. on that. We'll expand the list. Thank you, David. Thank you.